Time to get to the cooking. I'm gonna ask Yari what he wants for uh, breakfast if he wants to. Um, banana pancakes or what? Not ball pan sticks. That's cool. Banana pancakes will be a lot of sweet, so it'll probably be like. But if I make banana pancakes, I'll probably be bouncing off the walls on a planet. Zelda's. But like, I want to make banana pancakes because, like, like, I feel like I'm not getting everything I need from banana pancakes, you know? I feel like if I make banana pancakes, that I'm, uh, skipping out on some nutrition that I need. So, will you fucking roll up or some shit? Pants? Jesus. Uh, actually, let me phone here for a minute. I'm on pieces for a... wondering how they call me uh they call me the fastest pisser in the west so you know don't worry about it all right breakfast eat breakfast eat breakfast yeah. all right important question um so don't worry it's pointed this way I know you at this point. Uh, so do you want banana pancakes? The thing with banana pancakes is that I feel like we're going to both be super hungry way before dinner. Uh-huh. And we're also not getting, like... Sweat. I just don't feel like you want to do these banana pancakes. I do, but, like, Jesus. they feel like more of a treat than they feel like a breakfast. Well, then, then make them a treat, then. I don't fucking know. I, to make the breakfast, you're going to make this. Not well, gonna... no, I, would just, I would just make, like, a normal breakfast, like, omelet and stir-fry. Because you have no carbs. Normal, normal bread. Okay. I also have to look up about making banana pancakes again, I forget. Oh, whatever. Ooh, it's a little crispy here. A little, little, little fucking crisp is the best word I had. I guess that's what I'm going with. Alright, so, let's grab this. So, okay, first things first, making the star fry. So get this going. There we go. Get a big old dollop. Some, uh, you know what? This one, I'm going to save for the omelet. I don't think it really matters for the... Uh, you know what? What am I even talking about? I don't need ghee for the, the stir-fry. I have this, this good oil. Which I'm going to pat around with, with this guy. So, splash it up on the sides here. Get the pan... Do any coated. Put this guy out. I guess we'll just use okay for that. So usual stir fry, I guess. So mushrooms. Um we'll do a red pepper today. Because I like a variety. Right, I got some kelp too. Could throw that in there. Probably not gonna. So, 
do that. Mushrooms. Do I usually put mushrooms in pepper? Mushrooms, peppers, and onion, yeah. Okay, well, I guess that answers my questions. Walk this guy up. Got to change the stream to a cow, oh, whatever. I guess part of the making of making of willpower. The counts. So simple enough. Just cut these up. Juicy. Yeah, that's gonna be a good one. Wow. Mm, I can smell that. Pepper super good. Wow. And red pepper is dope. Too, it's gonna be a big stir. Right? Should probably be able to like salvage this a little bit more than I do. There we go. them long and noodle. I like everything long and noodle. I always say this, but like, anything that reminds me of pasta. Uh, just gonna cut that up like that. Anything that reminds me of pasta is plus in my book. So we'll just put them in there like that, and they will loosen themselves up. Dude, my, my fucking, my creative juices have been flowing recently. Um, I think it's just because I've actually given myself proper time to just chill the fuck out. Like, <laughs> I feel like my biggest mistake is forcing things to, you know, trying to force things. I, I want it, so why, why force it? You get, quote unquote, uh, from, from Kid Cutlet, you know? Um... You gotta want it, but not too much. I guess that, that really speaks to me. Uh, no, Probably don't need the cayenne here. Because there's already some juicy red peppers. But you know what? I'm a fiend for, uh, for, for some spice. I like, I like when stuff is a little, you know, hot. Uh, not always. Um, like, I haven't been putting hot sauce in my... my uh, omelets recently, because remember, whenever I put hot sauce, like, it's not, like, maybe if I got, like, some special hot sauce, it would have, you know, sort of a distinct flavor, but every time I get it with the hot sauce, it feels like, that's probably enough, it always feels like, um, 
that is the lid. It always feels like I'm just putting hot sauce in this thing. And, uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel like, you know, uh, it, it just feels like I put hot sauce in it. It doesn't feel like it blends with the thing. It feels like I just made this whole thing and then slammed hot sauce on there. <laughs> and that, that feels like, I don't know, it feels like it's not, like, I want it to merge. I want it to, to you know, I want, I want flavors to combine, not super separate. <laughs> Actually... What do to this guy? This guy's cool. I saved, that's, a, that's a ghee container that I, I saved, which I'm probably going to save. I'm going to start saving all of them because they're just nice glass jars. And they don't have, like, plastic tops. They, whoa, whoa, rogue. Rogue egg there, almost. Um, but yeah, they don't have, um, you know, like, plastic tops. And the plastic tops... You know, those will fall apart um, in some ways while you're while you're cooking with them, or not cooking. So they'll just like degrade over time. There's like these nice like tin lids, dude. These these will stay good for years, if if not longer. They won't degrade. They won't get rough. I don't have to worry about like the plastic kind of coming off into the the food or anything, so. Very, very, very nice. Very nice. I'm spilling spices all over. That's how, you, that's how you know it's a good food. It's when spices are everywhere. You know? I've been saying you know a lot today. I've been noticing it. It's kind of been pissing me off. You know? <laughs> So let me get them chives chopped. Yeah, here we go. Well, this guy. We will pull out ketchup because I'm probably just going to do it like that again. Maybe I'll make myself a sandwich. Maybe I'll make myself. Like those breakfast sandwiches that I made with the freaking the mustard dude. Like, fuck yeah, dog. That shit was lit. That shit tasted like it came from another dimension to rock my taste buds. Maybe I made that. Maybe it was a multi-dimensional sandwich. Multi-dimensional sandwich! I gotta fight like crazy Cthulhu beasts for the sandwich. Guys, would be from mine. Nice. Okay. So yeah, I'm feeling. I'm feeling the idea of the uh, breakfast sandwich. Um, part of what made the breakfast sandwich is so good, though, was the. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of. I'm kind of feeling like making it like a breakfast sandwich, but like with an omelet. You know, like cut the omelet in half, put those on two slices of toast. So. But this this is yard, so this one's gonna be just a regular ass on it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, those are loosening up real nice. So we're gonna grab me some egg going on here. I'm gonna pop this egg in here. Woo! Woo! Well, I'll watch some, uh, some phlegm there. Let me get that off this one. Woo! Beautiful. Damn, son. That's some good... That's a big boy? That's a big boy, that's what it is. Dang, it's on, that's a big boy. So we're gonna do an omelet, like I've been making them, except we're gonna make it a sandwich. 
So let's get some deliciousness. Deliciousness! I might put just a little too much garlic in there, actually. That's okay, though. Yeah, but so, minus the ketchup plus the mustard makes uh, all the difference, apparently. Um, I can give you hard cheese. He's been doing good with his... Uh, he doesn't need sh the cheese intolerance, I guess, as much. There we go. And then just a little parcels. And then we'll flip flop and doodles this guy. Boom. Yeah. Watch that baby rise. Rise like Monster Hunter. <laughs> Only uh, Monster Hunter rises better. Supposedly. A lot of people are really mad at the game because it's fun, I guess. Unlike Monster Hunter World. Ha, hey. I find that game boring as fuck. I don't know why most Western consumers like their game as boring as fuck. Because, like, literally, I've tried Monster Hunter World, like, multiple times, and it's just, like, eh, it's like Dark Souls of monsters. Then I put Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate for like 10 minutes and I was just like, oh my god, this game's sweet. Alright, so, start up on some toast. Get some toast ghosts. Save them in pieces for a delightful breakfast down the line. I gotta make something special with the end pieces, because I like end pieces, but like, there's gotta be something I can do. Like, if I make like an end piece, like, uh, uh an end piece, uh, sandwich or something like that, that's like special with the bread, because then like I'm accenting off the bread, I feel like I could do that. There's some ketchups. Boom. Nutrition. Boom. Nutritional omelet achieved. So let's check out this stir fry because that's that's a missing link from Yard's breakfast. Right, so let's turn that up a little bit so we can get that going a little bit better. Um, I'm ordering stuff today, so I th I think I need more mushrooms. Other than more mushrooms, I think we're good on cheese. We're good on other stuff um, for the breakfast pizza omelet that I made. Except for I want to try that again with uh, an attempt to um, accentuate the crust. I want to make the crust crusty, if I can do that. So I'm, gonna, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two different... I'm going to make two different cups of eggs. Two eggs in one cup. Throw that in, right? Then when I go to flip that, like I normally do, a second cup with a little bit of flour and nut, nut flour in it, lift it, put it in there, flip it, and then let that cook, right? And then hopefully, if I let that cook longer, the, you know, the nut-based bread, um, breading will, uh, crispen up. I might have to cook it a lot longer, though, so that's, that's the, that's the shade bars. I don't, I don't mind dedicating, like, 30 minutes to cooking, but, like, 
you know, it gets to the point where it's just like, ah, uh, like where I gotta like walk away. That's where it's annoying. Unless I'm like throwing something in the oven, which I could throw it in the oven, but you know, I don't want to have to do that. I guess. Can you like cook faster, dog? See, see what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm patient faster than most people, so you know. All right. Well, while that's a cooking. We can, uh, bread my toast. <laughs> oh. I had to, like, turn away for that. That was out of nowhere. Okay. So, here's the first toasting. The toasting egg. Which, this one, we don't gotta worry about. We just put some, uh, some butter and some mayo on that. Oh, that was, like, already too much. Just a little bit butter. A little bit of butter. You know? Don't need that much. Don't need too much. Killing something with butter is a sign of poor shipping. Ooh, here we go. Now it's starting to... This will start getting some nice grizzle to it. Grizzle to the fizzle. Yeah! Give me that grizzle! <laughs> yeah. Clean off this guy. We'll just put the put the mayo on this guy. Be easier. Um. Oh, this smells so good. Yeah. That's all I need. And then. Put the other two toasts in because I forgot to do that apparently. Some mayo and then the guac will go on the bottom slices. So mayo on this one. Um, I'll just do this. Oh shit! All right, well, whatever. And then we'll use that on the butter. Okay. Getting there with this. So, I'm gonna start cooking up for mine. Are you on? The fuck? There we go. So, let's get some ghee going on here. I think I've put all the spices in my eggs. That might be more than enough. Let's just do like this. Ooh. Yeah, that might be way more than enough. This is good fat, so I'm not super worried. Not the excess, not well, of it, but, um, definitely still don't want, like, a crazy amount, um, but, I probably could be working with a lot less, but it seems like the fluff comes from that, uh, over, that craziness of it. Did I put salt in here? Yes. So that's probably good right there. So let me get the other tip. Now I'm going to do the sprouted whole grain tips on the other side. So I'm getting like this dual, you know, thing going on where I'm getting both one thing from the, the grains and seeds and then the sprouted whole grains have a different sort of thing going on. But I like doing that. Oh, shit. Next time I do this, I should totally use the, the buns. That would be so rad, I feel like. Alright, I think these are, these are good at this point. Turn that off. We'll just drop half that, if not more, on there for yard. Because he's a zero carb boy, so he needs... It's not that he needs more than this. It's that I know I a lot more, because I did the zero carb thing for the longest time. And, uh... I know that um, when you're doing that kind of diet, it's hard to feel full. This carbs expand. So I give him extra stir fry. Because I know he's going to want it. Ain't that right, buddy? Yeah. I don't think he knew what I was talking about. 
Alright, so. Drop this guy in here. Yeah. So I'm just gonna make this like a normal omelet, and then cut it in half. Now let me get um, the guacamole. Avocado ish. Oh, it's not guacamole, this right. Unless mashed avocados are just inherently guac. It's not guac. I left that in there. Good thing that these things don't. These things haven't had an issue with them uh, heat-wise at all, which is like a plus because I'm kind of a moron. So, um, so I don't need to worry about putting the cheese on top of the um, uh, sandwich because and or the spinach because I'm putting it into the omelet. So I'm basically just making like an omelet sandwich here um, with uh, everything else. You know, it, it's gonna be inside the omelet, so. Everything else is just going to be on toast. I think that's all I really need. Um, yeah. It's going to work out good. Six, six, six. Six, six. Nope. Oh. A little tiny bit more butter. There we go. Little butter. Butter. Hello, sir. My name is Butter. My name is Butter, and I play the guitar. Yes. So do you know? Do you know of our saint and savior, Butai? It's a lot of, a lot of uh, avocado, but you know, needs to like the avocados, and it's really good for me. So I don't really care. Uh, I think for like someone regular, like maybe half this per slice would uh would suffice, and it would it would accent the. But I don't, I don't even notice the flavor of guac that much, so, like, I get this, like, power, this power fucking play with this fucking, uh, this thing. Something that uh, I love about Japanese culture is the passion in a craft that they, they establish uh, while they're doing it. So in something like cooking, um, just just watching someone at like a Japanese restaurant. Whoa! Just drop my chives. Someone watching, god damn it, watching someone at a Japanese restaurant cook in real time is, is usually something really, really cool to see. Um, like it's a lot, like you should look up, um, them making like steaks and stuff they like have like the hibachi grill in front of you and all that stuff and then like just to just do it all right in front of you and it's this really really magical experience what am i missing ketchup i guess i, I do know put that in my office, so we'll try we'll try that in this one don't know if it's gonna help the sandwich or hurt the sandwich aspect of it but uh Guess we'll see. Oh, got to do. put some macer on the sandwiches, and then that should be good to go. It's gonna be a little mustardy on one of those bites, but that's okay. I'm a fan of some mustard. Ooh. Yeah. Alright. Oh! These almonds are beefy, dude. Like, I notice that every fucking time, but like, shit, look at that image. <laughs> shit! Look at that. Look at that shit. Those are gonna be some fucking 
weird omelet sandwiches, but like, I ain't complaining. And I'll get myself some of the stir fry and we'll be good to go. Go eat breakfast. Watch the Super Mario Brothers, uh, Adventures of Super Mario Brothers for a minute and then play some uh, Zelda's. And hopefully I can just like let this sit here and I'll be gone. That's the, that's the problem I have with stainless steel. I don't know how, because like every time, <laughs> every time people are like, oh, yeah, like you're just not cooking it right on the stainless steel, but then like I see them cook on the stainless steel and it gets just as fucking messy, right? And I've never seen anyone ever cook on stainless steel and have it not come out like kind of like shit stuck on it. So I don't know, like, I don't know. I've just never seen it. It's like a, it's like the fourth wonder of the world or some shit. Eight wonders. You know, it just, it just never has happened to me. But, so I can't confirm nor deny that it's a truth. I guess you can't confirm or deny anything as a truth uh, until you've seen it. So it's kind of it's kind of a mind fuck. But hey, let me uh, I'm gonna go throw this in my room before anything else. You get some chopper sticks. Chopsticks, dude, I'm so glad I got these, uh, stainless steel chopsticks, that fucking good. So easy to wash, um, and I use them almost every meal, no matter what I'm eating. Okay, there's a monster that I created. Put that there. Alright, let me go, um, here, I'll put my camera back here, and then I'm gonna go put away stuff. I've never been... Oh, I will read all those texts in a minute. Give me, give me, give me a good sec. I'm gonna go, uh, clean the kitchen a little bit. Wow, these are some thick boy fucking. Uh, yeah, these are some these are some thick boy sandwiches. Ah. All right. Give me a second. Roll down my pants. Ugh.
Sorry, I was I was just reading through the. Uh, I was sorry. I, I switch when I switch. I forget that it doesn't account. Like I use my phone's audio when I'm in the kitchen. So when I switch it, like it goes to. Uh, it, it my mic was muted, so it wasn't like echoing. Um. But yeah, so hibachi grills are cool. There's like there's like two types of hibachi grills though. There's a Western American hibachi grills, and then there's like old school like like Japanese like hibachi grills and. Um, not hibachi grill, uh, the hibachi cooking. Um, I think hibachi grill is the, is hibachi the name of the art? Hibachi. Oh, hibachi is a traditional Japanese heating device that consists of a round cylindrical. So that's what they make this stuff on. But anyway, so there's like the performance art, you know, and that's when you go to like the restaurant and they like chop up the shit and they throw it up and they throw it in your mouth and, and stuff like that. That's like the performance art. But that's like, that's like a more westernized ver when it's like all super fun and stuff like that. That's way more Western than it is Eastern to my knowledge. I could be wrong. But like in, in Eastern culture, you know, most people are expected to be a lot quieter and, and whatever at restaurants and be, you know, respectful. There's, there's a huge, uh, air of respect in Japan that uh, is is expected to be upheld um, but like when you when you see people like in Japanese restaurants and stuff the dude it's it's so much different because in like a hibachi grill you know they're they're making it fun they're goofing it up they're they're doing crazy shit they're doing this they're they're just cooking in front of you at, at like eastern restaurants but they it's there's there's so much more like discipline and focus on the food they're trying to make the food as amazing as possible so you watch them cut it and they, they cook it right in front of you and like let me see if I can find um, I was watching a video uh, yeah this this one this one I'm surprised it was the first one that came up but yeah so this guy goes to this restaurant oh no maybe it's not I guess this is one of them but yeah so he's just recording the guy making the food but like literally the whole time he's just quiet you know quiet air he's not talking to the chef he's not talking to a whatever and the the chef is just you know putting so much pride into the work and like it's it's surprising but like you know it makes such a difference in the food and everything like that too because he's just paying attention so he's cooking this this uh olive and then he like puts this in here and like he just spices it up he gets it like all juiced up and everything like that and then they'll flip it like this after he's probably gonna cut it where's he gonna flip it yeah but like anyways it's just like yeah this, there's so much more of a art to cooking than just getting it done there's there's a you know there's a there's a visual passion in the craft um and that's that's something that i think is super highly respectable anyways i'm gonna eat some food uh i'm excited to try these crazy sandwiches that i made so we'll turn this up i guess a little bit so this is the first time I've made like an omelette sandwich, especially with like the newer omelettes that I've been making. Expecting things like that are also much more prevalent than here in America. Yeah, America's, I don't want to say garbage, but like our, our culture doesn't exist. Like American culture is every other culture, which causes just like clashes and stuff like that. But not to get into that, but like, yeah, in, in Japanese culture, like respect and, and just, just, just respect, I guess, like as a whole is just implied you know it doesn't matter who you are but like you're expected to just be respectful in in especially in public you know in your own private abode and doing whatever you can do whatever you want but like when you're on like the tram to work or you're at work or something like that like you're supposed to be like there are exceptions you know like someone cracking a joke in the middle of a quiet room or, or doing something for funny you know but like there's there's they, they even have comedy based around that um too I wish I could have taken you guys to the Chinese buffet. I love to go there. The food is delicious. Yes, I love going to buffets uh, like that. But uh, they, they like if you notice, if you ever watch like game shows and stuff like that, half the time their comical moments um, come from going against that norm. So like, what's funnier in situations is not the dude being an idiot. It's it's funnier because they're putting the guy being an idiot in a situation where everybody is expected to be quiet and respectful. So they like throw some guy into the middle of an office, right? And have him pop out of a box that nobody's expecting and like scream or something like that. And everybody else just like, they stifle their laughter because they're supposed to be respectful and they're supposed to like not be like super loud, but they're just like, 
you know, they're like, they know that it's happening and it's funny and it's hilarious, but they're like, God dang it, I have to, <laughs> I have to hold it in, you know what I mean? We have to be quiet. <laughs> like, so, oftentimes, like, like, they, I don't know, it's, it's, good or bad isn't, like, the, the thing, but it's, it's, uh, it's different, but it's, it's respectful. It's respectful. Like, that's, that's, you know, like, they, they really respect each other and that's, uh, really, really, that's really neat. That's really cool, in my opinion. That's, uh, pretty commendable. Um, so anyways, yeah, these sandwiches are gonna be, these sandwiches are looking dope. Mmm. Mmm. Cheese. Let me get another bite of this. It's awesome. It's awesome. Um, but I definitely think that in terms of sandwiches, like this is way easier than doing the over, well, maybe not way easier, but it's way easier than assembling the over easy eggs on a sandwich, uh, with like everything else. Cause I just basically put everything in the omelet and cut it in half and then throw it on the sandwich. So that's like way easier in terms of making it. But it's, it's. I don't know, something about the over easy eggs in a sandwich, you know, with the yolk popping and like that, that goo going everywhere, that makes like that flavor pop so much more. This, I'm, I'm really tasting everything else and I am the eggs, which is fine. It tastes awesome, but I don't know. There's, there's such a big portion of this is egg and I'm focused on everything else. Mmm. Tony, you don't need that much food. I really like that. <laughs> Just fire everything in the egg to combine the stuff. You'd be surprised at how much like making stuff separately and then combining it after will actually make a difference. I used to just like stir fry everything together. Like literally, I would put like I would chop up chicken, throw it in a stir fry with vegetables and stuff like that, and just stir fry up. You know what I mean? I haven't done that in, in forever, but I used to just put that in, let it simmer, and then combine it, and it would just put everything would just taste the same at the end, right? Um. I wasn't really like like working on the flavors or anything like that so I don't think that that's a bad it's not a bad thing like I, I don't know like when I approach my meals like my first thing is usually like only once in a while do I make something that's like intentionally like super not good for me you know what I mean most of the times I'm like how do I first take the nutritional aspect of this that's gonna be really good for me and then accentuate that and make that a good thing so like you know these for example these this bread but I mean I don't know I, I usually like stuff that's healthier for me in taste wise better anyways i don't know what it is maybe my body is just like yes this is good and then like tells me that it's good um but you'd be surprised at how much making like this the separate elements you know because then they're getting the flavors that are all popping in them uh and then when you combine them the flavors are still separate enough to sort of pop on their own uh and then you know like you get like the individual flavors that are really really popping but like like when you have everything popping it's like a whole different thing than when like everything's kind of toned down in itself on top of itself um so i used to i used to just like yeah i used to stir fry everything together and that just like it, it just like it wasn't bad it's just like now i know that like it could be spiced up so much more i guess but it definitely like did the job health wise like you know, cooking everything together. If, you, if you're just, like, looking for, like, quick and simple, throwing everything into a big pan and stir-frying it up and then just having some random... Like, it's not gonna be bad. It's probably gonna be delicious. But, um... I don't know. I've just been... I've been taking way more pride in, like, the act of cooking itself every time I cook. Because, I don't know, TLC, will, you know, one will make everything taste better, but... God, I like good food, so, like... <laughs> I figure why not just spend the extra, you know, five minutes of prep time and then come up with something that really, really bangs. Mm. Like, for example, this, this pepper, onion, mu mushroom stir fry that I've been making um, has really been, it really pops, really is good. Um, and like, I don't know, you get lots of good stuff like turmeric and stuff. 
Like, there's only a few things that I would say I personally... Like, cilantro, for example. Cilantro, I don't mind the flavor. To me, it tastes like uh, dish soap. So some people, it tastes like dish soap. For me, it tastes like dish soap. It's like 14% or something of people have, like, an extra thing in their jeans that, that like, pop makes one of the flavors. Like, like you notice, a, like, oh, there's a flavor that gets activated in your mouth that regular people don't have or something like that. So it tastes like, tastes like dish soap to me. But I don't mind it because I know that that's just what cilantro tastes like. But the thing with it is, too, is, is that... Whenever I've cooked with it, it takes over the whole flavor, so everything just tastes like cilantro. And that's great if I'm just trying to get the health benefits of cilantro, but like, I feel like... I feel like I would just, uh, rather just take a mouthful of cilantro to get the health benefits, and then just eat the food without it. But like, that in itself, like, in, cilantro and guac, I never notice with that flavor. Maybe I'm just using too much, that's also, you know, a, a factor, so... Um, and guacamole, dude. Guacamole always... Always slaps. I love guacamole so much, but I don't notice like the the weird overbearing flavor of cilantro. But I know that there's cilantro in it, so I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's the way I'm preparing it, and that's that's a very big possibility. I don't think I had that taste before. Well, I think it's a very smaller percentage of people actually have the get the flavor of like the the dish soap or whatever. But to me, I definitely it. it Maybe that's just how cilantro tastes, and like there's just a debate or something. I don't know, but to me, it definitely tastes like um, it's got that like weird. I don't want to say silvery, but like mwah, taste to it. Which, again, if it was actually dish soap, I would be like, "Yeah, I get this out of my mouth right now." But because I know it's cilantro and I know it's clean and I know it's fine and it doesn't have soap on it, like it doesn't bother me tasting that. It just tastes a little funky. That's all. Mm. I think also I, I might have screwed up by putting the ketchup on here. I think in the regular omelet that's amazing, but I think in the sandwich it kind of, it's kind of just there. I'm, I'm already kind of getting there, but like my goal is to like get good enough at cooking that every time I cook a meal, you know, twice a day, which I like cooking. I don't mind cooking. I like I like eating good food and I like feeling the benefits of the good food. Uh, and, I, and you know, it just it's a fun process and I just like eating good food. But like my goal is to get it to a point where almost every single meal is like. I want to say restaurant quality, but I've been making stuff that like I feel like I feel like if I go to a restaurant and order something, most times like it's it depends on the restaurant. Like if I go to Red Robin, dude, they're gonna give me a fucking damn good burger, and that's that's just it, you know. But like my goal is to just make it so that I'd rather eat at home. <laughs> but that being said, there's a lot of you know stuff I'm not exploring. Like I want to go to a Greek place. I don't usually eat Greek food. And it's because every every Greek food that I had in the past was I was I was expecting something different. That's what I think it was. It's not that I didn't like Greek food. It's just that I was expecting something different every time, and I always got something that just tasted like how olives feel. Just became Joker from Brewster to Five, who became a master coffee maker from watching an old man. Yes, exactly. I definitely, like, I should watch more cooking videos. Like, like no context cooking videos, too. Like, no, no like, tutorials. Just some guy cook at Lego Sabachi Grill, guys. Like, that shit, like, it opens my eyes just watching. Like, you'd be surprised. Um, but I was, I was talking to him. So, I follow Juan Hosmer on Twitch. Uh, he's the guy who made NSR. And he has a very small... Twitch, so I, I'm able to like talk to him and stuff when I jump on his streams and stuff. But he, yeah, he streams games, and um, uh, one of the things that he was he was I was someone else was talking to him about game design and stuff, and he was saying that like you know when it comes to like designing something and whatever, artists learn with their hands, right? It's not about memor memorizing everything and learning all this stuff. That stuff is is always good to keep in mind, 
But at the end of the day, your progress and what you learn is always going to be from your hands. So do it, right? So like cooking, you can look all sorts of like cooking videos and stuff like that. But yeah, I agree that like most of my, you know, knowledge has come from trial of error, you know, from my own experiences of actually trying to cook and stuff. And same thing with, uh, with like art, you know, making mistakes is how you learn and stuff like that. Mmm. I cooked those mushrooms just right too. Mm. It is a legend no one will forget. Everyone thought King Koopa had left the Mushroom Kingdom. And then, his doom ship attacked. King Koopa was back. To the greatest danger ever known is Koopa's Kings. Then in their new superpowers, the Super Mario... Because experience in the action is right. Like, that's, you know... That's something that, uh, you know, like, that's why I like, wow, that's hot, that's hitting me, hold on. Let me get, let me get this and then get a sip of tea. Mm. Mm. Wow. Ooh. I have no tea! Let me take a bite and see if that subdues it. Mm. That's better. <laughs> that was really hit me. That was like, it wasn't like overbearingly, it was just like everywhere in my mouth. Like somehow, it was just coming in, in the heat. So, um, I forget completely what I was going to say. Oh. It's just experience in the action. I was going to say something about that. Um. Oh. So I was gonna say that, like, for example, you know, a great artist, you know, I don't understand like, like, um, uh, judging intelligence or something like that, or like, like, uh, intuition or something like that off of like, like paper tests, like the SATs and stuff like that. I think like, like when you know when you take an IQ test, I think that's really dumb. Because, like, think about it, an IQ test never asks you to draw something out, and a lot of people are visual people, especially, like, Japanese people and stuff like that. Most everything that they create has some sort of visual uh, attachment to it. So, like, um, experience in the action is definitely something that I think is a bigger um, communicator of, of how good, like, like, people, someone can, like, seem really dumb and be, like, an absolute genius at something, like, that, that you know, requires their hands or something like that. So like, I don't know. You're never you're never going to like, like like you're never gonna like try to get a job in an artistic field and be expected to pass a math test. You know what I mean? Like that's dumb. I don't understand the connection there. It makes no sense to me. But like that being said, there's probably a bajillion artists who are like super good at art and understanding the visual aspect of art and and applying art to all sorts of things. Who just absolutely suck at, at, you know, like, on paper test kind of shit. Like, it just, it doesn't have a connection, but it doesn't mean that that person's, like, dumb or, or you know, less capable because... And I think that that's something that America teaches, and that is really, really asinine, is, is that, like, if you can't do on paper stuff, like a test or something like that properly, then you're probably not going to be able to learn other things, and that's just garbage. That's a dumb, that's a dumb way to look at it. And, uh, there were cases of students that weren't able to pass classes but needed someone to teach them a different way. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying, though. And that's, like, that's something that bothers me, too, about the American education system is that, like, you know, if, if you aren't learning something in a class, what usually happens? You get, you get labeled or, or you get, like, it's, it's on you. It's your fault, you know, that you can't learn that thing. But it's not on the teacher, right? And I hate that because it keeps, when they do that, when they label you, as you as the problem, right? It's like, our education system is perfect. You're the abnormality that's causing this to fail. And I hate that because that's garbage because everybody's different, right? Like a lot of people need like a lot of different ways to teach them things. And like sometimes just a different like approach can really make the difference, right? I don't understand whatever fucking polar bear tactic we were being taught in math, but I already knew how to do math a different way. 
So, like, it was easy for me to do it, but I didn't understand what the fuck the teacher was trying to teach, kind of thing. So, like, you know, like, it's like, oh, you get uh, a label with a disability or a mental illness. Yeah, and I'm saying that, like, I'm not saying that, like, you know, having that label, um, and, and that understanding of what something is to a certain extent isn't, like, you know, beneficial. Because maybe, maybe you are, like, for example, me with, uh, you know, symptoms of OCD and stuff like that, when I look up stuff for OCD and I look up how to, you know, manage certain things... You know, I honestly get good feedback and stuff like that. So, the, you know, but, like, at the same time, I'm not just, like, I just have this thing and that's who I am. You know, like, I'm not labeling myself. I'm just acknowledging that I have these tendencies and that I, had, I need a different approach than the regular person would have to certain things. And that's, like, I don't know. I think, like, the education system should take that into account a lot more than it does. Well... There's so much more deviation in in every single individual of a human than I think most people give credit to. Like we're crazy. We're we're totally different people. People are people are very different from each other. Um, and that can be both good and I don't want to say bad, but like crazy. It can get it can get messed up and stuff like that. But um, I'm not saying that we should like, you know point out certain things. I'm just saying that, like, when it comes to a personality, um, and how someone, uh, approaches something and how someone learns something, that can vary so ridiculously to an extent where, like, I think we should take that into account way more. And, like, I think the American education... Another thing, though, is, like, a lot of people complain about the American education system, and I think it's getting worse, and I think that's something to, to pay attention to, but, um, we also gotta take into account that, like, I don't think people give enough credit to the fact that, like, you know, education was, like, horrible, like, a hundred years ago. Like, like, education is a very new thing, right? It just seems like it's not because it's been in our lives our whole lives, right? And it was, it, you know, a thing before our lives. So we think it's, like, a lot bigger than it is. But it's, like, like, 200 years ago, Manifest Destiny was still happening. You know what I mean? Hmm. Mm. Mm. Alright, I'm gonna go wash my face. Put it in the Oh, Elijah, if you're still there, check out this, uh, check out this design and tell me, tell me what you think of, uh, my boy Dennis here now. I'll pop it on while I hit the bathrooms really quick. Um, boop. Last one is the one that's the most updated and, uh, pushed on. Um, and that's the one that I'm kind of pushing for right now. It's not necessarily, again, these can... These will probably change just a, a little bit, maybe, as I'm, uh, um, as I'm growing, uh, while I'm concepting the shit. Because, like, it's probably gonna take me forever to get, like, the, you know, whole animatic of this thing done. So by that time, you know, how have I grown as an artist, and can I just accent these designs really quick before I start actually animating this shit? Um, and that might be a factor, but... Tell me what you think. Uh... 
because I, I'm actually digging the last one. I think the silhouette on the last one is actually pretty pretty okay in comparison. I do think I'm going to try and push it just a little further, but maybe then I'm going to be like, okay, cool. I guess that's pushed as much as it needs to be. I guess maybe he, uh, I guess maybe he left. <laughs> That's cool. So, um, so all right. So I'm gonna switch to.